Doodlebot here. Not only do we have a cool pen to play with and look at today, it's one that comes with a box with a wicked drawing. That's the Peter Draws Narwhal Special Edition pen. Let's see how this thing looks. All right, glam shots out of the way. I managed to pick up pen number 756 out of 1080. I asked for like a cool number. Uh, trip, triple six was my personal favorite. But of course, all those type of pens were gone already by the time I pulled the trigger. But let's run you through it. Very sharp looking pen. It's an acrylic. Um, so it actually has some, some nice weight to it. I, I really like the balance and the weight of the pen. It feels quite substantial. It feels very solid in the hand as well. Nice and smooth. Um, no burrs, no snags, nothing uh, at all. It's very like just you hold it in your hand, you pick it up right away. And I went, oh, this is quite nice. Maybe this is why people like these narwhal pens. So you got a fairly uh, stiff clip here. That's fine. You can see it's two piece. So there's just like this little L bracket here. And then uh, this, I don't know if that's a rivet or just what they do to pop it on. And the whole thing's chrome plated as well. Um, you got the nice little narwhal band here right across. Very simple. Just a couple dots on it. Very simple. That's fine. Uh, it's got another band here in the back. And a uh, nice swirl that's built into this acrylic. So I, it's always getting, you know, very cool materials. Of course, there's really cool colors. There's hot pinks and yellows and all that stuff. But... Uh, yeah, there's these nice ribbons that flow all throughout the pen. Uh, right now, it's got some Noodler's Black in it. I figured I better because uh, Peter uses that quite a bit, and I haven't bought any before, so I ordered it with the pen as well. Uh, we're going to take it apart and give a closer look, but you can see here it's a uh, piston filler pen as well. We're going to take this apart and check it out, make sure it's all done nicely. Uh, screw cap. It's about one. Let's count it right here. So I think it's about one and a half turns. There's one half. It's just over half and reveals a nice little, you know, it's a stainless steel nib, nothing too crazy, but it's got some nice little work here on the nib. Let's get you in a little closer if we can. There we are. So some nice little scroll work along there. And uh, there is the narwhal spike in the water by the looks of it or something. Pretty cool animal. Uh, tapers down, we got a little flare out here at the ends section. Uh, goes along. We got some threads here on the barrel, done very nicely, nice and smooth. They don't bother me whatsoever. But the section's plenty large enough. And then we go along to the pen, and we'll get you a quick little close up of the cap as well. So you have your end piece here. It's got your your special number on there. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go through it. I've been really impressed with this. So this was my first time ordering from Gold Spot Pens, and uh, I had to because. They're the exclusive dealer of the signature pen for Peter Draws. I've uh, heard about the Narwhal pens. I know they're super popular for whatever reason. It didn't really spark my interest. Then I uh, happened to see you, Peter's YouTube about two hours after it aired. Talked about his special edition pen. And I thought, well, it's kind of now or never. I have to make up my mind. He's got about a million followers. These things are going to sell quick. So bit the bullet. Thought, let's do it. So let's check out the pen. First of all, a cool box. Normally the boxes don't really do much for me on its own. It'd just be a regular cardboard box. But uh, here's a close up of the doodle that you get on the Peter Draw Special Edition. So I thought that's kind of neat. Inside the box is standard kind of stuff. Um, I guess this is a bookmark that it comes with, which is okay. We got the Norwal, uh, Narwhal instruction guide and warranty, all that kind of stuff. Uh, thank you from uh, Gold Spot for supporting small businesses. And then you get a little card signed by Peter himself. So that's the same uh, drawing that's on the box and has a signature. Thank you for supporting my art, for supporting me and my art. Please enjoy your Narwhal original. Peter draws exclusive happy drawing from uh, Peter. Uh, it's like Del Deligish or De Degladish, Degladish, I think something like that. Anyways, enough about that. Let's get to the pen, comes in a box, it's got the standard little sleevey deevy. I kind of jammed it all back in the original packaging because I've been using it for uh, a week or so here. Also comes with a wrench. Uh, little issue with that, I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. But here we go, here is the pen. We're gonna run you through this, talk about it. Uh, you know, I'll let you know out of the gate. I really like this pen, I'll tell you why, and we'll run you through it. For weight, it's really nice. It comes in at just over 31 grams, pop off the cap. 
So we are what around 20 or so, so about 11 or so in the cap. Let's check out size comparisons. Very close to uh, some of these pens here. So that's a Pilot 823. We've got a Twisby Vac 700 Iris and then also the Eco. And here's a Leonardo as well. So uh, these two here, it's very close sideways. I'll pop the cap off and you can have a look. Here's our uncapped size comparison. So the closest pens I got on hand that are very, very similar is the Pilot 823 and then the Twisby Vac 700. So good size pen, not too big, not too small, very comfortable to use. Overall build quality for this pen I'd say is very good. Lots of nice little attention to details. I'll run you through those. Well, one little miss I'll show you as well, but other than that, really good. Um, so you can see here in the cap, there's no cap liner, but what they have, you can see there's that, uh, further down there's that step. So what that does is that presses against the collar here, the front of the pen. So when you go to tighten it, you're not relying on the threads running out to be your stop. You actually have a physical stop. You can see it's hitting right there. So it's not, you can't over tighten it. You can't wear the threads out and, and uh, trash those. Also too, you can see here, that's not going to be jamming. The, the end of the cap won't be jamming against that band. There's a little bit of clearance left over. So smart dimensioning on there as well, because that'd be kind of crappy if you tighten it too much and that's an oversight and all of a sudden you start pushing on this, this will eventually come loose. So they thought of a few things there. I, uh, I am curious how well that seals. So I figured I might as well break out the airplane simulator and uh, throw a little vacuum on this to see if, how well that seals. Even on the pen cap, how that gets inserted. So you can see uh, at the end of my finger there, if the focus doesn't take over, that goes into the body of the pen, but then they even have a nice little assembly inside to snug that up. So uh, it gets all attached. If we look down into the clip, there is a, a screw way down in there. There also is like a little silicone type piece to uh, seal that all up. But even there, that assembly all goes together and screws into the end bit. So that way the whole clip assembly is very secure. It's not gonna go anywhere, not gonna come loose. So nice little attention to detail, good choices on how the pen is assembled and design cues too. I figured since the pen is inked, we might as well do the writing sample first. So here we go. This is the Narwhal pens. This is the Peter Draws. And this is a signature edition. This nib is a fine and it's steel. Um, with this one being a fine, I would say this is actually a little bit thicker, a little bit wider for fine. Let's get you in there so you can see it. So I'll uh, bring up a couple other fine nibs so you can see. So this one's a little bit more on the chunkier side, but that's okay. It writes quite well. When I first got it, um, flow and everything was good, but I thought, you know, it's just a bit off. It feels a little kind of scratchier than I would like. Um, so I checked it under the loop and one of the tines was down just like a tad, just a touch. It needed me to just give it a slight correction. I don't know. It was maybe 30 seconds of work and that got rid of it. And, uh, this is a very, very smooth rider. The flow is quite nice. Good wetness. Um, like I said, a little bit thicker for fine. We'll get some other fine nibs out to compare. It writes very well, but if you're expecting your standard fine nib width, uh, it's going to be a bit thicker than you used to. So at, all these pens here are fine. So we got the VAC 700R. That's the thickest of the group, but the other ones are all pretty much in the line. There's a Muji, a Faber-Castell, my Osprey pens. So you can see all of them. The ones in the middle there are pretty much about the same, a little thicker on the Twisby. But then by the time you get down to the Narwhal here, um, it's actually probably closer to almost, I would say, a medium. So just keep that in mind. The fine is a little thicker than you're used to. So when she goes, I don't want it to go on the flight all by itself. So a couple of friends, the Twisby Eco and the Twisby Vac 700. I chose those because they have O-rings on the cap and seal quite well. So we'll put the lid on, we'll hook up the vacuum and see if we can make these bleed. We are hooked up and ready to go with the little vacuum chamber. So what this is going to do is simulate flying with the pen. So we just have to pull a slight vacuum to account for the pressure differential that you get when you're uh, flying at 30 some odd thousand feet. So I did a series on this. If you haven't seen it yet, here we go. 
Just got to pull it to about eight or so inches of mercury just to overshoot a bit. And uh, that's about the vacuum you get when you're flying at 30 some odd thousand feet. So you can see the clear cap there on the VAC 700, nothing leaking. So I'm just going to let it sit for a few minutes, play with it, maybe get a little bit more vacuum and we'll check them out. So it's tough to see here in the camera just because the jar is not perfectly smooth. But when I'm looking in there, you know, this one looks good. But in the background, I, I have a feeling it looks like the narwhal is leaking. So I don't, you know, it uh, helps to stop the threads and going too far and is a, maybe a bit of a seal, but not definitely not a perfect seal. Right, so it's been in there for maybe five minutes, six minutes or so. Let's drop the pressure and let's see what we get oh i saw some little bubbles there <laughs> see some of that ink in there again it didn't come gushing out just trying to get you a good shot and some focus so you can see we got some leakage in there that's some of the ink that came out um so yeah it's, uh, it's nothing wrong with it most pens do that but i was just curious if that really was a seal or not even though it's not a perfect seal in the cap here in the end of the section um you know there was only a little bit of ink that came out and i think probably it would stop the ink from getting anywhere else. So, you know, you've had a pen where it leaks and you take it out and it's all over the pen, all over the section and it's a disaster. You're looking for a paper towel or Kleenex before you can use it. Uh, there just might be a little bit of ink on the nib or feet or something like that. Everything would be contained below that. So that's actually a quite nice feature on there as well. So I'm gonna take the pen apart. You can see I flushed it out. So it's just a uh, friction fit on the nib and feed. So one thing with this pen yes the nib options are pretty limited fine and medium and the fine is like a medium so i'm just going to guess the medium is kind of like a broad would be nice if they had more options that is pretty tiny especially compared to uh this pen i did the other day 20 options you know so <laughs> 10 times the options that would be nice if they had extra fine you know that'd be kind of cool but uh, comes out easy, and the nice thing with that, if you have another number six nib that you want to use, you can pop it in there. So that's the workaround there. Now, this is the weird part here. So, you know, standard deal, you got the uh, piston, put it down, and so the knob opens up. You look for your flat spots. They have an included wrench, and you go to take it off, and I went, what? what is going on? Like I line it up. I know how to use a wrench. I've taken apart engines and precision equipment. And you really have to jam it on there so much so if you put it on, you're actually scratching the chrome plating. So there's really no reason uh, to make things such a tight fit. Like this is not a precision instrument. This is just a fountain pen. So uh, my only thought is uh, just the control. Like this is just a stamped wrench. Um, so maybe that's a bit off or uh, also when they did the plating, one thing you got to think of when you dimension a part, you got to think of the finish and will that finish add on extra girth to the part. So it could be something as simple. Uh, they forgot to account for the coating. But anyways, uh, what that does is the wrench does scratch the chrome. So I'm actually going to uh, open this wrench up a little bit so we don't scratch. So with this one here, I believe it's actually left-hand thread. Yeah, so you want to go clockwise to undo it. Turn it around. Like, it does keep the wrench in place, which is fine, but it scratches the pen, and it just doesn't need to be that tight. That's unnecessarily tight. Pull the whole assembly out. Let me get something down so I don't get black ink here. Okay, there we go. Let's at least contain it to that surface. So yeah, so now it's quite easy to access the whole pen, clean it out to get that little bit of extra ink or moisture out of the pen. So uh, it's all nice and tidy and clean. And then of course you can get to the piston, give it a little dab of grease, but nice unit. I mean, it's uh, uh, a steel piece that's chrome plated. So it's very durable. It's got some heft to it. It also gives a nice weight to the pen as well. So it's it just sits nicely in the hand. So I, I like the fact they're using good quality materials here. Everything is well built. Um, but like I mentioned, um, and you, again, you can take this whole thing apart if you need to. You just gotta, if you're not the most mechanically inclined uh, on positioning and stuff like that, you might have some some challenges on aligning the, the depth of the piston and everything else as well. But basically you're gonna go in that goes into the nut, set it up, screw it in, and you're gonna have to play around with that a little bit. So quick way to fix the wrench, just give it the old curb stomp. 
couple of precision wax and that should open it up. So after our little uh, precision whack, the wrench fits on there quite nice. I'm going to show you how to put this back together because these uh, piston fillers can be a little bit sensitive to positioning. So this is essentially the nut, that's the uh, the screw, so to speak, how they fit into each other. So those positions are kind of kind of finicky. So what you want to do is slide that sleeve into it, thread it on, and this is the whole critical dimension of the whole thing. So let's get you in a little bit closer. You might have to fiddle fart around with this a bit. So when you go to tighten this down, you want to leave just a little bit of a gap. I would, it's under a millimeter, I would say. So thread it down till it's right about there, uh, maybe a little bit closer, somewhere right around there. Okay. Then we'll zoom back out. You take your piston, you insert it into the nut, press it in and put in pressure here with your hand. Just give this a slight turn and then you'll feel it engage. And you're pretty close now if the cap there is almost at the top uh, of this profile of that nut section there. Then you're going to put a little grease on your piston, a little dabby dab. I would actually do a little bit on these threads as well just because we got, uh, if we can focus here, we got some steel going into the material which is much softer, so just for good measure. Away you go. Grab your nicely fitting wrench now and counterclockwise to tighten. You're gonna snug it down. You don't have to go crazy. There we go, tight, little snug. Now, as we tighten the piston knob down, there, you're in there. So what you might find with the piston knob, if it's loose, what happened was that uh, was the cap here was too far back on that thread. So the pistons travel all the way up and you can't tighten this all the way. So if it's rattling just a little bit, you have to turn that down just a touch. The other thing could be that the piston only comes up to, let's say here, by the time you tighten this and this is snug, the piston's only there. So you, you were too far down. So the space that I showed you is pretty close. You can see I might be able to get another, I don't know, millimeter and a half of travel. If I really wanted to, I could tweak with that, but it's just really not worth it. So if you have trouble with those kind of things, that's about ballpark where you want this position here on the cap to be on this whole assembly and then how you put it together. So you're not going to bash your head and be frustrated with getting and everything back together just right. Nib and feed, of course, it is, uh, you can see keyed, so it's only going to go one way. It goes in, seats it, so uh, I, I do like when they do that, when there's depth control and uh, also for uh, alignment and everything else as well, you don't have to worry about it. So there we go, pens back together. My closing thoughts on the Narwhal Piston Filler, Peter Draws Signature Edition from Gold Spot. Um, really like the pen. I mean, for this price point, what I think it was $60 US I paid for it, I feel it's very reasonably priced. The build quality, the material, the feel, the fit and finish, the overall design and level of detail and construction. I really like it. I think it's a great pen. Uh, one thing, it, it does post, but not very deeply. Of course, it's rolling everywhere, but uh, it only goes down to about the band here. So it makes the pen quite long and back heavy. So I don't post it. If you are a prolific poster and can only use pens with the cap posted, you might not enjoy it, but it has ample size. It fits in my hand pretty darn well. I think the only miss, other than this uh, wrench being off a little bit, is just the uh, the nib selection, fine and medium. That's it, and especially with them writing a little bit thicker. Uh, I think an extra fine, I, I would have ordered that now if they had that option. But, you know, you can swap out another nib for that if you like as a bit of a workaround. But that would be the only thing I would suggest an Arwell to do is just get some more nibs in there. But other than that, I really like the pen. I enjoy it. I get it. I see why everyone likes these. So there we go. We'll have to leave it for that and catch you next time.